Hi guys, I hope you're well. It's Sadell, and today we are going to be decoding the mark of the beast. There's been a lot of speculation lately that the mark of the beast is a microchip, that the mark of the beast are the new coming coronavirus vaccines. But all of these speculations seem to be coming from everywhere but from an honest reading of the Bible. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to work on sola scriptura and get our answer about what the mark of the beast is from the Bible and the Bible alone. And this is important because every third phrase in the book of Revelation is from somewhere else in the Holy Canon, in the Holy Scripture. So in order to understand what the book of Revelation is talking about, in order to understand what the mark of the beast is, we have to understand or get our answer from the rest of Scripture. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's go and let's do this. Okay guys, so basically let's go to the Bible, let's go to Revelation 13, that's where the mark of the beast is found, and here it is, as you can see in my Bible, this is a highly colored, highlighted section of my Bible. Okay, so let's go and let's see, let's start by Revelation 13, verse 16. So basically let's set a context, there are two beasts in Revelation 13, there's the beast that is basically the beast, the one that the mark of the beast belongs to, and then there is a second beast which makes everyone worship the first beast, that makes everyone receive the mark of the beast, of, of that first beast, okay? So this second beast is like a spokesperson for the beast, the first beast that comes out of the sea. So, uh, that's just context I want to set before we start reading. Hi guys, sorry for the interruption. So basically, I just wanted to say, uh, so you don't get lost, um, in this specific video, I'm not going to do an in-depth exegesis on the identity of the two separate beasts. We are going to touch on the identity of the first beast a little bit. We already touched on it in my last video on Daniel 7. And at the end of that video, I compared the Antichrist of Daniel 7 to the first beast that comes out of the sea of Revelation 13. So if you want to understand that more, please go watch that previous video. And in this video, we're just mostly going to be talking about the mark of the beast and you'll definitely hopefully understand it uh, by the end okay enjoy guys uh revelation 13 verse 16 it says also it causes all both small and great both rich and poor both free and slave to be marked on the right hand and on the forehead so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark that is the name of the beast or the number of its name this calls for wisdom let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is a number of a man and this number is six 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 okay um let's get into it let's not be scared guys when you understand what the bible is talking about there is no need to be scared of anything so basically um the mark of the beast it's very important to acknowledge where the mark of the beast is received. It's received on the forehead and it's received on the right hand, okay? So is this mark of the beast literally going to be received? Is there gonna be some tattoo on the forehead or some tattoo on the, the hand, okay? So guys, I think it's just very important to acknowledge, do we think that God cares about a tattoo or God cares about some mark on the skin, okay? Just an honest reading of who the character is of the God of Scripture. What the God of Scripture cares about is what is actually going on in the heart. So we have to ask ourselves, is this mark of the beast some literal mark or is it symbolizing something more. Okay guys, so this is basically where we need to go back to the rest of scripture in order to get an understanding of what Revelation 13 is talking about in this instance, okay? Is this some literal mark? Is it symbolic? Does it mean more? Okay, let's go. Let's look. So if you look in Deuteronomy 6, this is where something is received on the forehead and hand again, okay? So um, this, is, this is what connects Deuteronomy 6 to Revelation 13, okay? So basically, let's set context. In Deuteronomy 5, we have the giving of 
the Ten Commandments. It's actually the second giving of the Ten Commandments. That's why it's called, the book is called Deuteronomy. It's the second giving of the law, Deuteronomy, okay? So basically what's happening here is God gives the Israelites the, the Ten Commandments and this is what he says about the Ten Commandments. Let's start with Deuteronomy 6. Let's start with verse 4. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I have given you today are to be on your hearts. These commandments were the Ten Commandments that were, that were given in Deuteronomy 5. Okay, it says, this is what it says about the Ten Commandments. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames, on your homes, and on your gates. Guys, this is amazing because symbolism here is the same symbolism we got in Revelation 13. What is it saying here about the Ten Commandments, okay? It says basically, uh, tie them, the Ten Commandments to your hand and put the Ten Commandments on your forehead. Is God literally saying, put the Ten Commandments on your forehead? Put the heavy stone of the Ten Commandments on your forehead. Put the heavy stone of the Ten Commandments on your hand and log it around. No, that's not what God's saying. He's saying, your forehead, what, what, what's happening here? Your forehead is where your prefrontal cortex is. Your forehead is where all thoughts and decision making happens, okay? He's saying think about the Ten Commandments. Meditate about the Ten Commandments. Decide to keep the Ten Commandments and make decisions based on the Ten Commandments. That's the symbolism of what it means to put the Ten Commandments on your forehead, okay? And what's the symbolism with the hand? The Bible says in... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Ecclesiastics 9 verse 10, whatever your hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. And here we see in this instance that hands represents might. Hands represents doing things. So the symbol God's putting there is in your actions, in your works, let them be according to the law, the testimony of God. Okay guys, so basically we know the book of Revelation is a highly symbolic book and we know every third phrase in the book of Revelation comes from somewhere else in the Bible. And we know it's highly symbolic because we know these beasts don't actually represent beasts, they actually represent powers that are to be or are being in this world. Okay, back to the thir every third phrase. So every third phrase is from somewhere else in the Bible. And here in Revelation 13 verse 16, referring to the mark being given on the hand and forehead, we know this comes actually from Deuteronomy 6. This is a cross reference to Deuteronomy 6. So in our understanding of Deuteronomy 6, we know the mark is received on the forehead and hand, which um, is in direct reference to the Ten Commandments in your actions and the things you think about must be according to the Ten Commandments. So now here we have an opposition um, in, in Revelation 13 to this idea that now what happen, what you think about, the decisions you make, your actions are now going to be in opposition of the Ten Commandments because no longer is this a uh, thing being tied to your forehead um, and on on your hand from God now it's from the Antichrist no longer is it from Christ but now it's from the enemy the Antichrist okay guys I think it's important to realize that in our understanding okay of the mark of the beast that the Bible doesn't just stop there and showing us that the mark of the beast is in opposition to the Ten Commandments it even goes further and says hey it's six it's the number of a man and this number is 666 six, six, okay remember the Bible, the book of revelation is always just referring to other parts of the bible where do we have okay a consecutive number like this in the bible okay so this 666 six, six is the number of a man okay okay where do we find what's the opposite of the number of a man okay it's the number of god Okay, where do we find this number of God in a succession like this? Let's look in 
Genesis, Genesis 2 verse 1. It says, <clears throat> Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all of the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Okay guys, note that in Revelation 13 we have 666 and 666 is the number of a man, is the number of the Antichrist and note that man was made on the sixth day of creation. Six equals man. Are you going to follow man? Let's look at 777. 777 represents the number of God, the number of perfection that everything now is made and that it is good and God rested on the seventh day. So note, are you going to follow 666, man, or are you going to follow 777, God? Okay, guys, so... The mark of the beast is received on the forehead and on the hand. So we know that that is a symbolism of in the thoughts you think, in the decisions you make, forehead, and in the actions you do in reference to the hand, okay? So we know it's not a literal physical mark. It's symbolizing something bigger. And what is that symbolism? Well, we know that phrase in Revelation 13 is a cross reference to Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6 saying, put the Ten Commandments on your head in your decisions. Put the Ten Commandments on your hands in your actions. So in this symbolism used in Revelation 13, a cross reference to Deuteronomy 6, it's God showing us in symbols what the Antichrist is going to do. The Antichrist is going to make a law, is going to bring something into this world and enforce it that is in opposition to the Ten Commandments of God. And God just doesn't stop there. He even goes even more specific to which commandment is going to be attacked. And that commandment is the seven 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 commandment the sabbath commandment if you just look at christianity if you look at all the denominations around the world the most neglected commandment the most profane commandment the commandment the world is telling us to forget is the sabbath commandment Bye. I believe that Sunday is the Lord's Day and we have nothing to do with the Sabbath day. Differently with the Sabbath. It's something that's Old Testament and it's done away. Question, do Christians need to observe the Sabbath? The answer appears to be no. Christian. Here's the point. The point is that the Christian church made the change from the seventh day to the first day of the week rest. So the Sabbath command does not apply anymore. So all this Sabbath denial business started with this guy, Constantine I. He was the first pope, the first Roman pontiff. Hey guys, so that's all for now. We are going to have a part two that's going to come out soon. I'm working on it. And yeah, please be sure to catch it. In part two, we're going to be talking more about this change of the Sabbath. And uh, we're going to be talking more about the beast and how this um, is so relevant in the end times. So that's all for now, guys. I love you all. And please, please um, study prophecy, guys. Study the Bible. We need to know what's happening in these end times. We cannot be fooled and deceived by Satan. So love you all, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.